Hello, my name is Nikhil Malankar. I'm the founder and CEO of Gameon Studios. In this video, we will be learning about data science and AI in gaming. If you're new over here, be sure to subscribe to Scaler's YouTube channel and check out Scaler's events page. Link is in the description. But before we get started, let us first understand what is data science and AI in general. Data science basically deals with the study of data using which you can make informed decisions and improvements to your game or any software. Whereas on the other hand, artificial intelligence, that is AI, deals with the study of creating simulated behaviors and challenging environments for your characters or even behaviors in NPCs that are your non-playable characters. Basically, AI deals with making sure that your NPCs or your non-playable characters look as real as possible. They can speak to you, they can interact with you, they can run away from you, they can even chase you. So that is in general what data science and artificial intelligence is all about. Let's talk about the role of data science in gaming. We will be dividing this into two subparts. One is game performance and second is marketing. Using data science, you can actually enhance and improve your game's performance as well as your marketing campaigns. In order to improve your game's performance, you have to keep one word in mind, retention, which simply means how many people are coming back to play your game every single day. In order to study retention, you have to integrate analytics softwares into your game that will actually let you know how many people are actually coming back to play your game. You can also integrate events data to track how people are playing your game and studying all of these aspects, you can actually improve your game's performance as well as make informed decisions on where you need to make changes. When it comes to marketing side, you need to track your downloads, you need to measure how many people are coming onto your stores page, how many people are getting converted. So you need an extensive understanding of which kind of icons will work, which kind of screenshots will work. And all of this data, you need to run experiments from time to time. So you know you need to run experimental icons, experimental screenshots, and using all of that data, you need to sit with that data day in and day out, observe and make improvements from time to time. So all of these improvements take time and it won't happen on day one. You need to spend time on your game. You need to spend time on studying the retention. You need to spend time on studying the events data and then also your icons and screenshots. And only after this, you will be able to improve the overall quality of your game as well in terms of performance, as well as in terms of marketing. Some of the tools that you can actually use to analyze your game are analytics tools such as Flurry or Firebase. These will actually help you study your uh, retention data as well as your events data. And you also have to make sure that you don't overuse your data as well. But at the same time, you have to make sure that you get the right set of data points. For example, if you're making a level based game and your game has say 100 levels, uh, you want to identify how many levels players are actually able to complete. So you need to code in your event data in all of the levels and you, to, you need to understand whether or not a player is able to start that level and is able to successfully end that level. Let's say for example, if your level six is the toughest and nobody is able to clear that level, then naturally they will not be able to go to the seventh level and they will not be able to try any of your other part of the game. That is the reason why data science is very important in order to make sure that you are working with informed decisions and you're making levels easier. So one simple thing that you can implement is, let's say for example, a player has started the sixth level and is not able to complete that level whatsoever. Uh, so that's how you'll come to know that where you need to make the changes. Uh, because your first five levels will be perfect, the fault lies in your sixth level. And using data analytics is the only way that you can determine that your sixth level has the fault and not the rest of the earlier five levels. Data science is also important in marketing. If you know your target audience well, uh, you can actually create proper marketing campaigns to reach out the right set of audience. You can also calculate your game's ROI. So for example, if you're spending some amount in terms of marketing and generating some amount of revenue from your game, you can actually monitor your game's performance, make informed decisions in terms of improving your core loop and thereby maximize your revenue from your game. You have to determine at all times how much you're spending in terms of marketing and whatever you're making has to be more than what you're spending. So data science can actually help you and guide you to take all these difficult decisions and making sure you are spending in the right set of audience and thereby earning more revenue from, from them. It will also help you determine which countries you need to spend more money on. So let's say for example, you're spending X amount of money in India and X amount of money in US 
and if you are able to earn more money from India, you need to spend more in terms of India market than in the US market and vice versa can also be true. So it depends on a large variety of factors. It depends on your demography. It depends on how well your game is played. And then if at all your game is not being played well, then of course using data science, you can make improvements to the core loop of your game, launch updates and go through an entire improvement cycle. And that's how you can actually improve your game's performance as well as marketing campaigns using data science. And that is the reason why data science plays a major role in improving your game's performance as well as the marketing campaigns for your games. Let's now talk about the different types of AI used in games. Different games use different types of AI. Different genres use different types of AI. So let's say, for example, a racing game will have a different type of AI than a normal shooting game. And then a strategy game will also have a different type of AI in place. So let's talk about the racing game. Uh, the most common type of AI technique used in racing games is your rubber banding technique. What rubber banding technique means is essentially if you're winning a race, the competitor will become so competitive with you that they will start catching up with you and they'll make you lose. Or the reverse way is also true. If you're losing a game, then the AI will dumb themselves down to a point wherein you can easily be able to catch up with them. The other type of AI that is used in games is your pathfinding techniques. So let's say, for example, you are inside a level and you want to, you know, being chased by an enemy. So they will determine what kind of obstacles lay in front of them and they will make their way around that particular obstacles and eventually chase you. Uh, these kind of difficulty settings can also be adjusted as per the game developer. So game developers implement different different levels of AI uh, that will catch up to you and they, uh, you know sometimes they, there is also like different set of modes inside the game. So you must have observed there's easy, medium and hard mode. In hard mode the AI is extremely competitive with you whereas in easy mode it is a breeze and really easy to play. So that is how an AI can be de uh, designed in a game in a way such that it provides a genuine experience to the player and they can set the difficulty as per their ex uh, comfort level as well. If they want to be competitive, then for sure they can choose a hard level difficulty AI. If they want to just enjoy the storyline, then they can you know, uh, use an easy mode AI. In terms of a strategy game, uh, say for example a chess game, here the AI becomes really competitive and challenging primarily because th uh, there are a lot of data sets that you have to deal with. So generally an AI programming uh, method is very complex and someone who designs the AI has to consider all the aspects that go into picture, whatever can be happening inside uh, and outside the mind of the player. So typical scenarios, edge cases all have to be sorted and all have to be thought through by the developer before implementing a strong AI. That is the reason why games that have strong AI have all the edge cases planned uh, within them. Uh, if at all a player uh, exceeds their boundary or if at all the player exceeds the uh, viewing range of that enemy, what will happen in that case? Will the enemy st uh, stop looking for them? Will the enemy always uh, again go to the idle state? They will stop their patrol. All of these aspects need to be thought through and created into a proper AI architecture document that will then be implemented inside a game. So a strong AI will actually make you believe that a non-playable character or an NPC is actually out there and talking to you or conversing with you. This makes for a really enjoyable experience and a gameplay narrative that is set inside the game. So that is the reason why designing such a complex AI is very difficult. Uh, primarily because you have to deal with multiple states, you have to trigger uh, different different states. Say for example, you have to create multiple interaction layers between your player as well as your non-playable characters. And not just the non-playable characters, you also have to determine how those non-playable characters will uh, react with other objects inside the game scene. So all of these aspects coming together make for a really good gameplay experience and that is the reason why AI is very important in games. It makes for a believable gameplay experience and it does not make you feel as though you're playing a game alone and that's how it provides you with much more entertainment. So that's it about the use of multiple AI in games. Uh, different different types of games as I mentioned earlier just to recap have different types of AI experiences uh, We saw r about rubber banding. We saw about pathfinding. We saw about how uh, Obstacles can be tracked by your AI. So this is largely also uh, a part of the a star algorithm like this There are multiple algorithms in place uh, would definitely urge you to do a little bit of R&D about this topic as well because this is an extensive topic and artificial intelligence is uh, an important field in its own right. So that's it about AI from our side. Now that we know what is data science and AI in games, let us understand which is easier to learn. 
So as for me personally, I believe that AI is slightly difficult to learn and that's primarily because you have to deal with complex logic and design your game experience in such a way that you don't feel that you're playing against a computer. Whereas on the other side, data science, it's relatively easier to pick up primarily because you're dealing with data sets and you can always you know, rely on hard data to make decisions based on data science. So that is the reason why you, know, you can use tools like Flurry or Firebase and then make informed decisions to improve your game's performance. There are generally just a few terms that you have to deal with, such as your retention, um, then your average revenue per user, daily active users, monthly active users, etc. But when it comes to AI, you actually have to design complex logic. You have to uh, deal with state machines, you have to deal with different, different types of uh, behaviors, you have to deal with interaction layers. So it's a lot of complex things that go into picture. And that's the reason why implementing a strong AI is relatively difficult than you having to grasp and learn data science. On the other side, although learning AI is difficult, but it is very important to be implemented in the right way in your games. As we saw earlier, the different types of algorithms that get implemented inside a game, it will not be re really a fun experience if at all you mess up in designing your AI. So take for example a racing game where, when you are winning all the time, it will not be really enjoyable to play. That is the reason why you need to have competitive AI in place that will sometimes also make you lose, thereby making you actually wanting to play the game again and again. That's about the AI part. Talking about a strong AI, a really good AI in place provides for a really good replayability experience. That is the reason why so many of the hardcore games have such strong AI. Some of the best examples I would recall in terms of a hardcore AI can be the Dark Souls series, even Sekiro game, which has a really difficult AI to tackle, but players don't get bored of it. They see it as a challenge for themselves to make sure that they complete that particular level. So according to me, I believe that having a strong AI in place is both frustrating as well as enjoyable. That is the reason why hardcore players, they get hooked onto a game for hours and hours together. Even though they are doing uh, almost the repetitive task and fighting the same set of bosses, it provides for a really fun and nourishing experience for the gamer whenever they are actually able to defeat that difficult boss. So that's the reason why AI in terms of gaming needs to be implemented in the right way and that is how it will be able to provide you with an enjoyable experience. Although I mentioned earlier that data science is relatively easier to pick up, I would definitely recommend you to learn about AI as well. Uh, that's primarily because it is challenging for yourself as well as fun to learn. So that is the reason why I would definitely recommend you to learn about AI as well. Here are some of my favorite games that use AI and data science amazingly well. I'm talking about Candy Crush, Clash of Clans, Need for Speed series, Red Dead Redemption, and even chess. So let us do a deep dive into each of these games and understand what do they do right. My most favorite example when talking about data science is this game called Candy Crush. On the surface, it looks like a simple match three game, but there's a lot that goes in the background. While developing this game, the developers actually had an extensive amount of data science and research done on the user behavior before launching this game out in the market. This game not just deals with your core game mechanic, it also deals with multiple aspects such as your game design as well as game sounds implemented in the right fashion in order to make sure that the user keeps on coming back to play that game. There are also n number of levels that people keep on playing and right from a four year old to a 60 year old, anyone can play this game and enjoy this game extensively. And this is only and only a product of proper data science implemented in the game. The next game that has a perfect implementation of proper amount of data science is Clash of Clans. Clash of Clans has a really interesting system of gacha system, which essentially just means delayed gratification. You reward the player and then you make them wait in order to claim that particular price. This coupled with a really strong gameplay makes Clash of Clans a really fun experience to play. The developers of this game have thought through and done extensive amount of research just like Candy Crush in order to provide for an amazing gameplay experience. So that is the reason why Candy Crush and Clash of Clans, both of these are my personal favorite implementation of proper data science used in these games. When talking about AI, I personally feel that chess cannot be left out. Chess has some of the best implementation of AI in games. There are so many different units and so many different permutations and combinations in the game, which make it an absolute marvel of a game to code. So a human versus human scenario is relatively easier because all the inputs are being taken from the player. But when it comes to designing an AI wherein a human is playing against a bot, that particular experience should be really challenging and the AI should not be dumb enough to make the wrong move. 
because you have to keep all these things in mind, you have to uh, keep the uh, track of the position of that particular player and the bot, and you also have to predict what the player is going to do next and also plan for your checkmate moves. That is what makes chess really difficult in terms of implementation of AI and an amazing example of AI being implemented in video games. The next really strong example of a proper AI system in place is all the open world games in question. So be it Red Dead Redemption, Grand Theft Auto, Sleeping Dogs, Watch Dogs, all these open world games have some amazing AI implementations in place. Right from your pedestrians to your car and your traffic system and your food stalls and your dumb AIs, every single thing in place makes for a really amazing immersive experience. So all these open world experiences uh, have uh, some amazing amount of AI implemented in them, which makes you believe that you are a part of that world. And that is the reason why I personally love, uh, if I were to single out Red Dead Redemption 2 in that matter, because this game provides you with so many aspects in terms of world building. There are trains moving in the game, there are people that you can interact with, there are people you can help, there are horses that you can ride. Horses also have their own set of AI. So all of these beautiful implementations come as a part in Red Dead Redemption 2. And this is thanks to the first implementation in place which set uh, the seeds for that game to mature further. Uh, along with this, also Rockstar Games has created some amazing open world experiences like your Grand Theft Auto series. They as well have some amazing implementation of AI in place. So that is the reason why if I were to look at some of the strongest examples in AI, I would always refer to open world games because they have a wide variety of systems in place that work beautifully with sync with each other. With this, we come towards the end of data science and AI in gaming. We hope you found this video informative. And if you like this video, press the like button and be sure to subscribe to Scalar's YouTube channel and hit the bell icon. In order to learn from industry experts, be sure to follow the Scalar's event page. Link for that is mentioned in the description. Thank you.